I'll be on Mars. Please go be on it, Nardo, and I'm gonna put the video on YouTube so you'll have it. So you can listen to the game where you can. Or you can just go and be on it, Nardo. So this is right here, this really cool looking thing. What would you say if I showed you to this to you? If I jumped out at you in a dark alley and said, hey, look at this, what would you say to me? Well, you'd use it to say that, right? But what would you say? Hey, that looks like the ear. <laughs> it looks like a hearing aid. It absolutely does. It's not the limbic. It's the limbic system. This right here. And you gotta say it, Nick. You gotta say it loud and proud. I can't hear you come back there because it's too short. And then you claim that you said it all along, and I. So, be loud and proud. This is the limbic system. We got different parts of this limbic system. You know, it's like a blue bean thing. It's inside of the brain. It's in, in located in the center of the brain. So there's got to be different bits and pieces. So um, let's just go through them. This right there. <coughs> thalamus. The thalamus. What is the thalamus's job? Does anybody know? Does anybody have a guess? What the cycle? It's what? Cycle? It is a cycle. Well, it's switchboard. Switch You're thinking a little lower. Switchboard. Switch <laughs> Switchboard. Thalamus is like a relay center. And again, also, we have like this right here. This is called the fornix. Again, this is switchboard. Switchboard. Well, you know what? Actually, I hate saying switchboard there. It's more like a relay. What? It's a relay. A relay. It's like it sends a signal to the place that it belongs to. Um, okay, so what have we got here? What is that? Oh. Uh, this is like a uh, uh, no? Nah, the amygdala is a ball. Olfactory complex, which is, what's Mel. its job? Smell. Smell. Smell is part of the limbic system. That doesn't make any sense. Have you ever, have you ever had a smell and been overcome with an emotion or a memory? Yeah. Yeah. Limbic system has two major jobs. You know what two major jobs are? Memory, memory emotion. and emotion. Um, the sense of smell is, is hardwired into your emotion and memory system. Uh, you ever smell something and remember something? Uh, you ever walk in the wrong room and you get a smell? Smell is is closely and intimately connected, intimately connected to the sense of uh, emotion and memory. And smell more than almost any other sense can evoke memory and taste evoke um, uh, uh, emotion. Taste is basically smell. What? Taste is basically smell. They're the same. They're very similar chemically. They're very similar pathways. They're very similar. Taste is basically smell. So yeah, but smell is not possible. Uh, is it because they're both chemical? Yeah, they're chemical receptors, and they, their pathways are similar, and they go to these similar areas. The respiratory uh, center is close to the olfactory. It's very close. Do you ever try to taste things without smell? Walk in your sense of smell? Where it's smell is very difficult to taste. You can taste something like very specific without smell. Without sense of smell, taste is impossible. Okay, so moving on. Moving on. Let's see where we're at. Where we're at. So we've got. What is that thing? Does anybody know? Here. No. What's this cool? Corpus callosum. What is the corpus callosum? I'm sorry, what? It's connection, yeah. Connection between hemispheres. Connection between the halves. So we've got we've got we've done a lot of uh, the connecting stuff, the mechanical connecting stuff. The only one that has an interest, not interesting, the only one that has a specific function that we would recognize as a brain function is the olfactory so far. So let's start looking at, there's a couple of glands, we're not going to focus too much on those, but you've got the two different glands, you've got, um, you've got pineal and you've got 
Um, what's the other brand? Uh, Who cares? cares? Pituitary and continuing with pituitary gland, they are uh, they're responsible for homeostasis. Yeah, we're not going to go into too much detail. Uh, the pituitary is the master gland. It runs all the other glands in the body, and that's the pituitary here. The pineal gland is responsible for like sleep wake. It, it covers a lot of like serotonin and mer melatonin. It's the sleep wake cycle. It's the, what gets you a, the level of alertness you have throughout the day, your circadian rhythm and those two glands. It's not super important until the glands, but they're part of the limbic system. Um, so let's talk about the structures that I feel are the sexy ones, the ones that we care about, um, the ones that we care about, right here you've got this bad boy located below the thalamus, so we call that the hypothalamus. Thalamus, you know what it does? It's a switchboard. It makes sure the signal goes to the right place. What is the hypothalamus responsible for? Cycle. Cycle and drive. Mm -hmm. Cycles and drive. We're talking about hunger, sleep, weight, um, thirst. Uh, your uh, the things that you do to maintain your life. Those those things that get you to do what you're doing. So those are the hypothalamus. If you guess it, eventually you'll get it. So, Alice, what is this bad boy? It's a freaking amygdala. It is not. <laughs> no. It's the actually, the hippocampus. It's the hippocampus. The hippocampus. It's actually going to be the looks like a seahorse if you pull it out. And we are going to see hippocampi, camp hippocampuses when we open up our new brain. So the hippocampus is what? Michael Allen, do you know what the hippo hippocampus is responsible for? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, memory. We'll just call it memory. But yeah, memory formation and memory maintenance is the hippocampus. The limbic system, two major functions, emotion and memory. And the hippocampus is the big player when it comes to memory. The big player when it comes to emotion happens to be? Amygdala. The amygdala. First try. Yay! Almost. Right on his first try. <laughs> Good job, Alex. <laughs> the amygdala, which is emotion. The ones that you need to really pay attention to, hypothalamus, amygdala, and hippocampus, those big three are the limbic system proper. Those are the ones that I'm going to be really focusing you guys on. Hippocampus, hypothalamus, and the amygdala. Memory is the hippocampus, amygdala is the, me is the emotion, and hypothalamus is the driving cycle that keeps us alive. That is the limbic system, brothers and sisters. So is it like um, thalamus? Oh no, hypothalamus is like hunger and stuff? Yeah, hypothalamus is hunger. The drives, desires, that kind of stuff. We have different cycles throughout the day where we're more awake, less awake, more hungry, less awake, or more hungry, less hungry. Those are those are different vibes of hypothalamus. And there's a blank one for you, a blank limbic system, so you can fill it in on your own. Let's look at the outside, the cerebral cortex, that thing that makes us us, the cerebral cortex. I'm gonna go over this pretty quickly. So we've got different lobes. There are how many lobes in the cerebrum? Four lobes. Four lobes. You're going to have real quick. Temporal, temporal. One. Temporal, temporal. Two. Three and four. Basically, those four lobes. Four lobes of the brain. You've got this one in the front is called frontal. frontal. That's the front. That's the front. The frontal lobe. What is the one in the side? Temporal. What's the one in the back called? Occipital. 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 And parietal. And parietal. Parietal. The four lobes of the brain. You've got frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. Let's look at the functions, the major function of these. Frontal lobe functions. What do you guys have? Wait, are you most, wait no. no. Personality. Personality. Speech, is it speech? Yeah. I wouldn't say speech, but voluntary, motor, sens 
neutral. Um, personality, voluntary motor control, consciousness. Consciousness, those are all related to that. The speech is close, it might be on the border. I think the speech area is actually up in the center. But I, could, I could be wrong, it's, it's close. Frontal lobe is you. This is you. This is the, the, the bit that we speak of as our own, as, as what makes Richard Burton Richard Burton. Is that I can tell, but just by listening to them speak, or by just chatting with them online, I can tell if it's Richard or Cameron. I can, uh, that, that bit that makes Richard unique is his frontal lobe. His frontal lobe. Yeah? Parietal. Does anybody know the parietal? Sensation. Movement is, or it's, it's just kind of a border between the frontal and the parietal. We'll say that there's some voluntary motor control here, but we'll just say sensation parietal. We'll leave it at that. Sensation. What about occipital? No, vision. Visual, yeah, yeah. This is not a note reading contest. <laughs> Look in your memory. What you can do here is your notes, I guess. That's kind of true. Um, and temporal. There are specifically two areas in the temporal that we talk about language. We talk about brokers and scissions, and we talk about word achievement. Brokers is here. Brokers. And brokers, do we know what brokers are responsible for? Oh, it's the speech, right? Is it physical speech or is it comprehension? Yes, yeah, it is speech. Comprehension, right? I believe brokers. Are you? Did you do brokers? Yeah. And it was so it's understanding the speech. Yeah, it's the, it's the you gave, remember you gave us a little thing about speech yeah. and brokers in English. Yeah. And then you have. Right. Yeah. Wernicke, which is. Actually, forming the words is the Wernicke. Brokers is understanding the words, and Wernicke is actually forming the words. I believe. Do a real quick check on that. Any check for some of Nope. Nope. I think nope. What are you wrong? I think it's um, Yes. Christian. Sorry. No, but physical. Sorry. Good job, Joe. You got that right. in my mind was telling me that it was incorrect. So Wernicke is an acronym for understanding speech. I got the I got the function right, but I got the names wrong. And in the front brokers and it's physically forming words. If you have a stroke in Wernicke if you have a stroke in Wernicke's area, you will uh, not be able to understand speech. You can speak all you want, but you won't be able to understand it. Everything's just it's the the spoken words people are kinda like woo 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 if you have a problem in Broca's area, Ooh. you understand speech fine. People can talk to you and you understand it, but you can't form words with your mouth. What's the word? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sound right when you're saying it. So yes, when they come out, it's like, blah. Yeah, so you, you, you can say words fine, but they don't come out correctly. You can't control the motor of your mouth. What about? And again, that was, that was like, yeah. Do I have a motor or not? 